Hi guys, welcome to the second episode of Oli Ranks. I've been watching and reviewing the second season of Classic Doctor Who and to be honest, I actually enjoyed this season a lot a bit more than season one to be honest, even though there are some stories that in this season I wasn't a huge fan of but as it once again I'll be ranking stories from season two from my least favourite to my favourite story of season two. So let's begin shall we? In ninth place is the web planet. This is actually my least favorite story from the Honold era because the plot wasn't at all engaging and I felt the story was mainly focused on the zombie and the planet voters as well as the other characters of the story and such as the Monoptra and the TARDIS crew and I think the reason why is because obviously the BBC were trying to make a monster that was as popular as the Daleks but it didn't really work for to be honest. And the ambition was I'm sure, the set design was visually appealing and I liked the ambition of the story but as I explained before the story was a bit over ambitious and it, the plot was a bit all over the place and the execution was wasn't that good so and I gave the web planet a 2 out of 10. In 8th place is the space museum. The first episode was very good and it laid the foundation for the rest of the story but what came after wasn't very well done and the plot was a bit all over the place and it was a bit boring to watch as well. The villains, the Morok, they weren't very interesting at all but and so was the Zerons but the idea was good though but to, the, to be honest the execution was a bit iffy and but not as bad as the weapon so I gave that story a, nine, sorry, a 5 and a half out of 10. In 7th place is the rescue. This is a pretty good story, even though it was quite brief. But this was Vicky's first story, and she had a very good introduction and very good character development. The twist of Benny being to the Coquilin was actually very well done. There were some parts that could have made the story a bit better, but it's still a good quick watch, and I gave that story a 7 out of 10. And uh, obviously, the plot, the characters are good as well. Well, the main characters, anyways. In sixth place is Planet of the Giants. I thought the story was quite inventive and ambitious, even more ambitious than the web planet because because even if I, this was meant to have been the first or the second episode of Doctor Who, if it was the first story, first or second story of Doctor Who ever made, I mean, I think that was one of the ideas that came out of, that was drawn up. And in the TARDIS, as well as the time travelers being shrunken to size, I think it gave the opportunity to have amazing set designs like the oversized matchstick box, the oversized insects, and the visuals as well was quite was very good. I mean, I like the scene where it was revealed where the TARDIS had landed inside the small inside the garden, but they landed inside like the cracks of the pathway of the garden, and it just it rose up to where there was a house in front of it, and that was very that was a very good scene. The love the music of this story was very suspenseful, and there were some very good performances as well, mainly from the main cast, but. The other characters were interesting as well. Although I do wish the TARDIS had interacted with the other characters, maybe they would have met someone that would have helped them, but I still enjoyed it, to be honest with you. It was still a good story, and it was probably a, an underrated story as well, so I gave that story an 8 out of 10. In 5th place is The Romans, a comedic episode which proves that Doctor Who can do a lot, lot more than his historical dramas or science fiction. The comedy in the story was very well done and it was very well directed. A lot of, there were a lot of funny moments such as Vicky telling the doctor that she thinks she might have poisoned Nero, the doctor pretending to play the liar <laughs> and that was the scene I actually found very funny and the doctor telling Nero about how he found out he was going to poison him but not directly telling him, just telling him oh I can't wait to perform in front of your the arena is going to be a roaring success. It's going to be something that crowd will really think that he can do. <laughs> and Nero's face was like, what? How does this man know what he's talking about? <laughs> that's actually a very funny scene. There was a mix of there was a good mix of drama as well, so that pretty much made the comedy. And I think that's what really helped the story. And of course Ian and Barbara's I don't know how to explain it without getting a big graphic but they were a bit close in this story <laughs> especially towards the end especially the part when Ian and Barbara when Ian was play fighting with Barbara was trying to like grab her and something like that but as I mentioned before they might have 
hooked up before the doctor and Vicky got back into the villa, or maybe they might have hooked up who was in the villa. But <laughs> who knows? But but to be honest, I think the comedy in this story was a bit too much. I mean, there were some moments that really shouldn't have been funny. I think they should have focused. There should have been. Um, if it was fifty percent drama, drama, fifty percent comedy. But look, this story was like sixty percent, no, seventy percent of comedy and thirty percent of drama. But still, very it's still a very good story, and I gave the Romans an eight and a half out of ten. In fourth place is the Crusades. Even though I wasn't too pleased with how Barbara enrolled in this story and how she was a damsel in distress, how she was bound and gagged by the Saracens, but and the Tardis crew being separated again. I mean, I was. At that point, I was just getting tired of it. And imagine how much I fought in the space museum when they got separated again. But still, I still enjoyed watching this story, The Crusade. I mean, there were some very good performances, especially for William Hartnell, Ian Fitz, like, William Russell, Julian Morris. Wait, who's Julian Morris? The guy that played King Richard. <laughs> And Joanna, I think they all. I think those ones that really stood out in my eyes. Yeah, so there's some good character developments in this story. I mean, we definitely see Barbara's character grow. I mean, but it's proof that she has grown. I mean, she does knock out one of the Saracen guards, and she does free herself from danger before she's rescued by Ian. Well. Ian was on her way to rescue her, but she had rescued herself and Ian had found her and they went back to the Doctor and Vicky. And I loved the Doctor and Vicky's relationship as well, they were together again. I mean, William Hartnell and Maureen O'Brien, they definitely did have a good relationship with each other. I mean, as I explained before, they were quite close backstage and it really showed in this story as well as future stories as well. I mean, I think William Hartnell is very good with working with these young actresses. As this grandfather, granddaughter figure, I think it worked really well with him. And I think that's what gave his appeal the, the grandfather figure everyone knows and loves about the first Doctor. It's an underrated story, missing episode, and I hope it does get found. Or episodes 2 and 4 get found anyway, or at least animated so we can have season 2 complete. So I'll give The Crusades an 8.5. So. The top three and all of these stories are perfect tens in my opinion. So in third place is the Dalek Invasion of Earth. The Dalek's second appearance in Doctor Who and I felt they were a lot better than their first appearance. Very good supporting cast, it was very dark and gritty. I love the set design and I love this, the special effects as well. Even though they did edit it for the DVD release and I think that was the one I saw. And I think I read somewhere that was, the Dalek spaceship was just something on a string. But I think for the DVD release they used CGI and I think that was But still, either way they're both very good they were very nice effects and there were some iconic scenes like the Dalek going up Westminster Bridge, the Dalek coming out of the Thames. It was a very nice story visually and the story as well the script was absolutely fantastic. I mean I love the doctor's speech to Susan. I love Susan's departure in general, it was quite emotional to watch and she was like he was she the doctor was like her, one day I should come back it was very you can tell the emotion between in that scene I don't think they're acting I mean I think William Hano didn't really want Caroline Ford to go and I think he was quite emotional at that and the emotion really played out as well I think for Caroline Ford as well I think she was quite emotional about leaving as well and I showed in her performance as well so it was another beautiful written scene and I think I think that's something new, the new series kind of fails to do. I think they do try to be emotional, but I think it's a bit over emotional. Like Amy Rose's departure, for instance. But for this story, I think it was a bit. But this story was just very emotional. It was quite genuine as well. So I gave that story a 10 out of 10, as I mentioned before. So my second perfect 10 in second place is The Time Meddler. Another dear story to me. <coughs> It's a fantastic story that kind of develops Doctor Who and explores the mythos even further. I mean, this is the first instance of another Time Lord and the Monk, and he's a very good character, and I'm, I'm glad he came back for the Dalek's Master Plan, even though it was just for like three episodes, but it was still nice to see him. There were some brilliant performances, and Stephen puts on a good show in his first adventure, having stood in the TARDIS in the last story. 
The support deck cards were very good, such as Eldred, uh, Wolnoff, and Andrea. No, not Andrea. Well, the female, well, the female Saxon. I think the main one, the Doctor was was hanging was was with. Yeah, let me let me borrow a train. Remember her name, but she was a very good character. Yeah, and I think they were quite good as well. And the Vikings were very good, even though they weren't too involved in the story, but there were good side villains as well. And the Vikings were scary. And to be honest, I don't think there was any historical story in Doctor Who that actually made the main villains quite scary. So, a perfect ten is a ten middler. And in the first place, my favorite Autumn Hartnell story. Ta-da! It's the chase. My favorite all-time Hartnell story, as I mentioned before a few moments ago. The plot was very exciting and very engaging, and the chemistry of the main cast was off the charts, and it really showed in this story. And of course, this is the Dalek's third story in Doctor Who, and they were very good, even though they were pretty much reduced to like for comedic purposes. I mean, but still, they were quite good here. I mean, we hardly see any Daleks. People fight back against the Daleks physically. I mean, we see, of course, in Daleks Monster Clan, sorry, in Vision of Earth, we see a few people carrying the Daleks in Bedfordshire, and of course, I think the Frankenstein creature in the Ghana, in the haunted house in Ghana, actually carried the Dalek and just threw it against, threw it on the floor. I mean, that was quite impressive. And so, some very good scenes, it's just like the Keys of Marinus, there's some very good travel aspects of this story. I mean, I mean, they go from location to location to location, and I think this is one of the first instances, one of the early instances where the Doctor and his companions go back to at least a contemporary Earth, or not exactly contemporary London, 1965. <laughs> I'll get to that in a bit, but yeah, we do see the doc the Doctor and his companions land in New York City in the 1966, and of course we see Morton Dill. Also known as to me and another friend of mine as Hick Steven. <laughs> I really loved that. I really loved Morton Dale. I wish he they used his character a bit more. He was, he was a very good character. Even though he was there for like a few minutes. <laughs> and of course, this is where Ian and Barbara depart, where they head back to 19, London 1965 using <clears throat> the TARDIS, the Dalek time machine after they've been defeated. I mean, it was a very raw, beautiful, another emotion, emotional co de companion departure, I mean, I mean, they weren't acting, William Horner really did not want them to leave, and it was as if Jackie Hill and Will also just wanted to convince Horner, oh, we have to go, it's our choice, and then Vicky and Maureen O'Brien was like, Doctor, I think you should let them go, well, Vicky slash Maureen O'Brien was, was telling William Horner slash the Doctor, I think you should let them go, I think it's, if they want to go, just let them go, help them, help them, progress further and the doctor actually does help them in the end so but that they weren't acting and that was actually genuine and I think as I mentioned before Will Russell was like I don't think William Hunter ever forgave me for leaving Doctor Who Ooh, so the chase and I gave it a perfect 10 out of 10 so thank you for watching my all my reviews of season 2 and the second episode of Oli Ranks this will be my final video of 2019, as I mentioned before, and I mentioned on my Twitter page. I'll be going on holiday, and I won't be back until mid, until at least the 20th of Jan January. So late mid January, I'll be back. So I'll hopefully be doing a review. Or hopefully, I'll be starting my season three review of starting my season three review of Galaxy Four when I come back from holiday. So. Let me know how I did for this video and let me know what you thought of season 2. So, this is Ollie. See you later and have a good Christmas and a wonderful new year to my 11 subscribers for now. Hopefully, I'll get more during the new year. So, if you know any friends who loves Classic Doctor as much as I do and as much as you do, please recommend them to this channel. So, see you later.